Today I'm going to go over how I use a heart rate monitor to gauge and assess my own running fitness. Now I think heart rate monitors are really good running tools because you can usually tie your heart rate to a given effort level and then you can run at that effort level one week and then a few weeks later run at the same effort level and if your times are getting faster that kind of shows you're getting better, your running economy and fitness is getting better. And the opposite too, if it's getting slower then it usually means something's up, you got to change something. So I think it's a really good measuring tool to gauge your fitness as you're training to make sure things on the up and up. Now the specific workout I'm going to do today is called a MAF run. MAF stands for maximum aerobic fitness or maximum aerobic uh, function, I guess. I don't really remember. <laughs> but the MAF run, what it consists of, is running within a specific heart rate range around a flat area for about four or five miles as a test. And then do that again a few weeks later same conditions, same clothes, same shoes, same time of day, and then see if the times are getting faster or slower. So specifically, the heart rate range you're going to run is going to be 180 minus your age. So I'm 33, so that's going to be about 147 beats per minute. So for those four miles, four or five miles, I'll try to keep it around 147. I'm not going to freak out too much about it, just keep it within a few beats per minute. Um, and I'll get five, four or five splits for that, and uh, I'll use that for measuring next time. So the reason why you want to use 147 around that uh, heart rate range, is that's going to be around your maximum aerobic capacity. So a lot of the distance races or aerobic events, you're going to use your aerobic system. So you want to make sure that your high-end aerobic system is going to be as finely tuned as you can. So that's why you don't use a really high heart rate, like 180 or something, because that system is your anaerobic system and you can only hold that for a few minutes. You don't want to go too low either, like 120 beats per minute, because you can go much faster using the same system. So you want your high-end aerobic system, which is usually around 180 minus uh, your age. And in the book, Phil Mapitone has a lot of other reasons why he uses that, but in general it's going to be around that heart rate range. Um, usually if you don't have a heart rate, a good heart rate monitor or just want to go off feel, you can just try running while breathing through your nose. Um, once you start breathing and you can't breathe controllably through your nose, that usually means you're crossing over into maybe uh, you know, your anaerobic, your anaerobic uh, system and you don't want to do that. So I usually pick a flat area too, like this track, because I can see uh, bigger time gaps or time uh, changes inside a flatter track as opposed to a hillier track where you can have the same effort level and get a little bit better but the differences in improvement are going to be smaller. So I used to like, I usually like doing a track. So I'm going to start with this uh, four or five mile math run today and I'll see how it goes. I know if I'm in pretty good fitness I can usually do 630 to 650 miles pretty even. Um, today I haven't really been trained that much the past three months. Probably going to do seven, ten miles for about the four, uh, four miles, maybe worse, <laughs> but uh, we'll see, I'll give it my best shot and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I just finished my four mile math test and the results are pretty much what I expected. I did the first mile in about 701, close to 7 flat, second one 706, 712, 716, so it's pretty close, averaging about 710 is what I thought, uh, but the biggest thing that stood out for me was that I could tell that each mile I was getting progressively slower. So 5-10 seconds slower each mile It's a pretty good indicator that my endurance isn't what it should be. Um, normally if I'm running pretty higher mileage, like maybe 70 miles or over, each lap is, is within 5 seconds of the next one. So it's going to be like 635, 637, 639. It's normal for it to go a little bit slower each mile, but the closer you can have them together, it just shows how much better your endurance is. So I still think I have a little bit of speed since the first mile was around 7 flat or maybe a little bit, a little bit uh, under. But definitely I couldn't hold it as those splits were getting farther and farther away from 7 flat. Um, I'll just go home now, bike back home, do a little bit of analysis on it, check back to see uh, some previous map tests I've done and see how, how much I've fallen. <laughs> so here are the splits from the math run I just did. The first two miles were warm-up miles, so the first math mile is actually the third mile, the one at 6.56.
From there, you can see the splits are getting progressively slower, and there's a 20 second difference from the first and fourth mile split, which is pretty significant. This indicates to me that my endurance isn't so great right now. For me to improve on this, it means I've got to increase my running weekly volume. If my tests show the splits were very close together, but instead my split times were slow, it usually means I have to put in faster runs into my schedule, like tempo runs, intervals, or strides. When I do this test in two weeks, I'm going to look for faster splits and more consistent times throughout each split.